thank you. Uh, we just want to make a couple of comments. Uh, first, it is good news. We did, uh, got the uh, uh, surplus report. Uh, we think it validates the uh, position that Republicans uh, took and acted on when we were in the majority. This validates the idea that we should restrain our spending growth to be more in line with economic growth and resist the temptation to burden the economy with more taxes. I think it is ridiculous to assume that the budget that was passed six months ago is responsible for the positive forecast that we have today. We always know that there's a lag, and I think the policies that Republicans pursued are the right ones, the ones that have been proven in the surplus, that that's what we need to continue to do. So we have now a $2.1, $2.3 billion surplus at this point. Uh, we believe that we need to give it back, give it back to the people who provided that surplus. Uh, we think that uh, uh, we ought to give the whole thing back. We are ready to act as soon as we can get bills passed to return the entire surplus to the people who paid it. We think that we need to repeal the unnecessary taxes that were passed last session, particularly the business to business taxes. We think we need to establish conformity to the federal tax code and we need to repeal the gift tax. But it's not enough just to correct the mistakes that were made last year. We think we ought to look at some more permanent forms of tax relief to the people of this state and to the economy of this state. And we will be coming up with some ideas as we go forward, and we will propose that shortly. So at that point, I want to turn it over to Representative Dowd, and he's got some comments to make, too. Uh, thank you, Senator Han. Uh, you know, obviously uh, uh, not a huge surprise in the budget forecast today. This is the sixth straight positive budget forecast, uh, and, and we as Republicans worked very hard to make sure that we got Minnesota's economy uh, and budget back on track. Um, Democrats' proposal today, however, is uh, is really no surprise, uh, and 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 you know obviously they're proposing uh, about a five hundred million dollar uh, uh, reduction in, in taxes after taking uh, two point one billion from from Minnesota taxpayers. So only Democrats' math uh, would say that returning five hundred million dollars after taking two point one billion uh, is a tax cut. Uh, Democrats' extreme approach uh, doesn't end at massive tax increases. Um, over the last uh, year, uh, Governor Dayton and Democrats' policies uh, have forced 280,000 Minnesotans off of their current health insurance plans. And they've given salary increases to politicians, and now they're building themselves a brand new office building. Um, and, and their policies uh, also could result in the unionization of private in-home child care providers. Uh, the reality is uh, that while Minnesota's budget is seeing a surplus right now, Minnesota families are not seeing a surplus. Uh, and, and that's why Republicans today are proposing to give that money back to Minnesotans. Um, and, and we're calling it our Give It Back Act. Uh, frankly, this money doesn't belong to uh, Minnesota government. It belongs to Minnesota taxpayers. We said a, a year ago when, when uh, uh, Democrats passed their, uh, their budget uh, that they didn't need these tax increases. Um, and that Minnesota's government didn't need this increased spending of over 10 percent. Um, so we're proposing uh, the Give It Back Act, uh, which would give the hard-earned money uh, that Minnesota families aren't seeing in their own budgets uh, back to them. Uh, the proposal consists of uh, $314 million uh, in, in repeal of the business-to-business -business taxes, uh, over 90 percent of which uh, Governor Dayton's own commissioner said is paid by hardworking families in Minnesota through higher costs for goods and services. Um, we also are proposing a, a federal conformity package uh, that consists of about $330 million, um, and Jennifer Loon is going to talk a little bit more about that in just a little bit. Uh, we're also uh, proposing a repeal of the the, the gift ban tax, um, uh, or excuse me, the gift tax, uh, for a total of about $685 million uh, of reductions. Um, that would leave about $547 million uh, left to go. And the proposal that we're making is we want to hear from Minnesotans. Um, and you see at the bottom of the chart, uh, we've got a hashtag, give it back. We want people to share with us their ideas. Tell us how you'd like to receive your money back. Minnesota, this is your money. And in Minnesota, we want you to get your billions back. So please communicate with us. If it's through Twitter, that's great. If it's on Facebook, that's also great. If you want to call us, uh, if you want to write us, if you want to email us, if you want to come and visit us in person, uh, we welcome your ideas and we want to know uh, how best we can help you. After all, this is your money uh, and we want to give it back. So Jennifer will talk a little bit more about the tax conformity and, and then I think we'll uh, maybe take some questions. 
thank you. And as a member of the tax committee also, um, we took action yesterday on a tax conformity bill. But there are two provisions uh, short of doing full conformity for Minnesota families. And you know, as, as the DFL mentioned, uh, they want to invest in Minnesota families. Well, so do, so do the Republicans, so do all legislators. The approach, though, we want to take is different. Because if you are married couple filing jointly, um, you're going to get hit with a penalty in 2013. You don't get the full deduction uh, that you would get of uh, people filing separately. Uh, the DFL bill provides that full conformity in 2014, but not this year, not now. And when we have the surplus funds, why should we not be offering 640,000 families that same uh, deduction that they get through their federal return on their state return? It doesn't make any sense. The same with uh, the standard deduction for dependent care. Families with young children that have to pay for daycare, very expensive. Why aren't we offering those 26,000 families uh, the deduction that the federal government's going to give them on their state tax return. There's time to do this quickly. Uh, all parties came together to do uh, emergency funding for, for people suffering because of the cold weather and needing help with their heating assistance. We can work equally quickly to provide this full conformity. The money is there. We all want to invest in Minnesota families. So let's give them back the money that they that they uh, are entitled to through the federal tax code. Let's do it in our state tax code as well. And let's do it right away before they file their taxes for 2013. Roger Chamber wants to talk a little bit about the uh, other taxes we're going to repeal. Um, it's been mentioned already about um, uh, undoing, first, undoing the mistakes of the 2013 session. And part of that, as they've mentioned already, is full repeal retroactively of those job killing tax increases on businesses. Uh, we do that, that's more jobs and higher wages for all Minnesotans. It helps families, it helps farmers, helps technology companies, and it will help um, in the end also warehouse companies. We had a committee hearing yesterday and we had warehouse companies, technology companies, other businesses sit in front of the committee and tell us how much these taxes will impact their business. How other companies are already switching their services and taking their business to other states. And if fully implemented on the warehouse tax, how many more jobs will leave the state? So full repeal uh, and retroactively of the B2B business taxes that were imposed on Minnesotans last session. Undoing those mistakes means higher, more jobs and higher wages for all, the, uh, all those individuals working. And it's better for Minnesota fa families, helping them in the end. And just uh, one other comment with uh, respect to uh Majority Leader Bach, uh, the tax season isn't over. A lot of people haven't filed their taxes. Uh, we believe that we should do this soon. We should do it before the tax uh, re uh, returns are due. And we can. I think the House is willing to act. We think the Senate could act if we wished. We need to do that. And we ought to do it. So we are prepared to, uh, to join with our colleagues in passing uh, tax relief, uh, sending it back to the people who paid it. Uh, we believe that we need to do this before we do a bonding bill that we should have a tax bill before we do a bonding bill. That should be the first priority, and we should do it before the tax season ends. Questions? Just to follow up on your last statement, the tax bill before a bonding bill, are you suggesting you withhold the two votes that uh, Democrats need? We're just to suggesting that we bill? want the tax bill done first, and uh, we have a proposal that is specific and uh, we think comprehensive. It's very unclear yet what the uh, majorities in the House and the Senate are going to want to do, but we think that we need to see what that is, and we should do that first, and then we'll decide what we'll do on the bonding side. Before we add more debt, let's see what we're going to do with, on, with the, tax, the tax code. The, uh, the Democratic leaders uh, say you are rooting against Minnesotans. You're gloom and doom, and you ought to be ashamed of yourselves for that. Gloom and doom? <laughs> We, we're trying to make sure that the surplus is returned to the people who need the surplus. State government doesn't need the surplus. Families need the surplus. 
Uh, taxpayers need the surplus. Let's get the money back. Let's get it in the economy. We're proud that the economy has recovered. We think it's due to the policies and, uh, that we put in place. The budgetary tactics that we employed are part of the reason why we're seeing the success today. So we're not gloom and doom at all. We're very happy to see the economy thrive. We think it's due in large part to our policies. It, it appears that the, the budget director and uh, the commissioner say that the tax increases, uh, uh, the two billion dollars of tax increases, did not and will not affect the economy in the future. Do you see it that way? Uh, did you interpret it that way? <laughs> You know, I, I'd also like to comment on the on the, uh, the previous comment that the speaker made. I think that's uh, horrible to think that anybody in St. Paul would be wishing against a, a, a good economy. Um, Minnesota's economy is is improving, uh, but there are still many signs that uh, that we need to be cautious of. Uh, you know, in, in this report, there's there's numerous signs. Uh, in in November, uh, they were forecasting uh, an increase in personal incomes. They've actually downgraded that 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 increase now uh, in this forecast in just three months. Um, um, so while, while Democrats are, are doing a, a celebratory victory lap uh, that, that the state has more money in its budget, Minnesota families aren't seeing that, that increase. Minnesota families aren't seeing extra money in their wallets and in their budgets. And, and that's where we need to see it. That's what's going to help Minnesota's economy. Uh, the state government spending, you know, uh, 12 or 15 percent more money this, uh, this biennium instead of 10 percent is not going to help Minnesota families. What we need to do is make sure that Minnesota families can feel uh, the same kind of benefit that the Democrats think that the state budget is feeling. Um, and that's exactly why we're proposing uh, to give the money back. Let's give it back to the people that need it. Uh, state government does not need this money. Minnesota families need this money. So let's give it back. Do you also support uh, pay increases for long-term care workers? And uh, if so, where should that money come from? The, uh, the proposal is not a direct pay increase. It is a 5% uh, to the uh, home and community-based services industry. And a lot of that ends up as wage increases. But uh, I think uh, bipartisanly, uh, there's support for that. It's about a... Uh, I don't know, $80 million proposal. We would certainly prefer to do that than to spend uh, $80 million on a new building. So I think uh, if, we, if, uh, if there's going to be any trade-off here, that would be a logical one from our point of view. But, but we think that it is uh, a, a promise that has been, uh, needs to be kept, uh, that has been made in previous bienniums, and uh, I think there's broad support for it bipartisanly. I guess one other thing I would just like to say, we are a little bit cautious about the effects of Obamacare and Minsure going forward. I think that is an uncertainty to this forecast. We do not know uh, what that long-term effect is going to look like, but we are not uh, enthused about some of the prospects that we're seeing. Uh, perhaps some of the money that we're proposing to return might help people pay their higher insurance premiums. And, and Pat, I didn't really answer you, all of your question, which was, um, you know, about uh, whether or not these tax increases are going to hurt Minnesota's economy. There's a lot of things that have been proposed uh, that we still don't know about. Uh, you know, the Congressional Budget Office is saying that, that Obamacare is going to cost uh, nationwide five, uh, you know, 500,000, maybe as many as a million jobs. Um, it, you know, there's a lot of things. Uh, minimum wage is another one. They just came out this week saying that, uh, that, that uh, you know, there was going to be job losses because of an increase in minimum wage. Um, so there's a lot of things going through uh, this session uh, that could really be harmful to job creation in Minnesota. So uh, what we want to do is pass policies that, that really give Minnesotans the opportunities that we know they want and need for their families. Um, one of the statistics that I keep mentioning is 49% of Minnesotans are currently underemployed. Um, so well, you know, and that's, that's a great uh, statistic to show that while Minnesota's budget has improved, uh, the, the economy for Minnesota families has not improved. And that's where our focus needs to be. Uh, well, we just passed uh, bipartisanly, I think unanimously, the propane uh, uh, spend. Uh, I, I, I can't think of anything off the top of my head that would be a, a significant spending increase that is uh, going to be advocated for or supported by, by our caucus. Other questions? So you're, you want to give it back? Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you got it. Yeah. Give it back. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you all.